Welcome uh, to today's uh, chat with chair session. Uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Keshav Suri. Uh, Mr. Keshav Suri is the youngest uh, executive director of the Lalit Suri Hospitality Group. He is involved in the group's expansion, uh, quality management, uh, building marketing strategies, operations, and the FNB uh, revenues. Under his guidance, the group established FNB brands like 24 7, Baluchi, and Oko. His brainchild, Kitty Sue, the group's nightclub, uh, completed eight successful years in August 2019. Uh, it is one of the longest running and the most inclusive LGBTQIA nightclubs in the country. The club has supported acid attack survivors, hired India's only differently able DJ, and people from the deeply marginalized LGBTQ community. A firm believer of responsible entrepreneurship, Keshav Suri has been working with several NGOs and activists to help mainstream marginalized communities. He launched the Pure Love campaign to spread the message of love and educate the masses. Uh, it's uh, really a pleasure to welcome uh, Mr. Keshav Suri. Uh, great to have you with us at this session, actually during the Pride Month. So a very warm welcome to you. So let's actually begin. You know, I think as Vicky, we did something which was uh, a first for any uh, chamber to do uh, the formation of the Vicky uh, Diversity and Inclusion Task Force. Yes. Uh, so if you could just share with us your thoughts and your vision about the focus of that task force and its relevance in today's you know, times. So, uh, firstly, thank you for that wonderful introduction, uh, Mr. Chinoy. And of course, uh, you know, there were a couple of things that actually we did with Fiki even before we initiated the task force. Uh, I launched my foundation, my own foundation, which is the Keshe Suri Foundation, uh, with uh, Fiki as a partner. Uh, and uh, we this was back in 2018, after the reading down of Section 377. But I mean, I would say even before the reading down of Section 377, Fiki has always been, um, I think, one of the most, or is the most inclusive industry body uh, out there. Uh, and I think that um, luckily with me and Fiki and the relationship that I've had with Fiki, I've never been uh, questioned about my sexuality or all the initiatives uh, that I wanted to do with Fiki. And that's all thanks to you and your wonderful team. Uh, as far as uh, the task force is concerned, we uh, launched it uh, uh, after, again, the reading down of Section 377 and the launch of Keshe Suri Foundation. It was basically a task force on DNI uh, under uh, Jyoti Vej, uh, Uma, and Bhavneen. Uh, and uh, we basically um, had me and Radhika Piramal uh, as uh, co chairs, uh, who are two openly queer. Uh, you know, leaders in the industry. Uh, and uh, we divided it into three subgroups. One was on gender parity, which had Preeti Tamilo as a uh, third subgroup chair. Uh, uh, the other one was, was on empowering people with disabilities uh, with Nipun Malotra on, uh, on as the uh, subgroup chair. And uh, the third one was on LGBTQIA plus and uh, issues, which is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, uh, uh, you know, uh, and queer uh, issues with Zena Patel, who is openly trans and uh, working with KPMG. And I think the uh, reasoning behind this task force was that whilst we had, um, you know, reached a point where inclusive growth is the call of the day of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, that DNI has to be a part of the DNA. Of, uh, of, of pretty much every company out there. Um, and we've known and seen through the pandemic that the companies that have basically survived or are surviving are the ones who've had very strong um, inclusive practices within their companies. Um, I think we realized that earlier on through this task force already before uh, the world came to an screeching halt and uh, and and we said that no we're going to take this on where we are going to make sure that as an industry body and as a, a task force we're going to go out there to as many companies especially members of picky and talk about inclusion talk about diversity first 
and basically make sure that our voices are heard that there is enough representation there is enough conversations uh, about our voices and now the legality of at least when it comes to lgbtq uh, is not there because there was the reading down of section 377 so uh, companies and legal teams should not have that issue anymore to take up lgbtq issues but now i think it's we reached a point where we and the future of dni and this is what we're discussing amongst the task force is that we've had enough conversations we've spoken about it we've all patted each other on our back and we've also talked a lot about uh, inclusion and the economic benefits of inclusion and you yourself have launched various papers uh, you know be it community business papers or even the uh, lee budget paper on the uh, you know the, the economic benefits of having inclusive growth especially with the lgbtqi plus community now it's time because of the pandemic and just in general we need to go out there and actually build livelihoods with the community um and that basically is i think the future of dni because what we realized is that not every every when you're climbing a wall and you're different heights right you uh you do you give a stool to somebody do you give a ladder to somebody not everybody is equal. and the the conversation with this is to make try as much as we can to get an equitable uh society meaning that are the people in the marginalized communities especially in our task force given those exact opportunities we can talk about getting jobs for trans community but are they skilled enough to be getting those jobs is the company prepared enough to understand the issues of the community to be able to hire so i think that's where we're at right now with the with the task force you know it's interesting you 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 talked about skills and you know i'll just share an anecdote and then we'll move it you know i when i was at nscc i actually got a call from bhopal mm -hmm. and uh, so she said you know i am a transgender does nscc support uh, transgender skilling i said yes it does and what can i do yeah so there was a kind of a silence at the other end and she says do you know who transgenders are i said yes i know who transgenders are she said you know i, I am shocked to hear this and what can i do so we, we i got someone to call them we we set up uh, this thing and incidentally in uh, in the in the program in 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 lalit she was in the audience and she came up to me and said <laughs> Do you know who I am? So I said, No, I'm from Bhopal. They said, Oh, you must be the person who called me for skilling. They said, You remember? And you know, it's quite a quite an interesting phenomena. But you know, given that context, a lot of people don't feel included. So in terms of inclusion, you know, how far do you think, as a country, you know, uh, we have come? And even in inclusion, also, in, in, you know, talks about gender. So yes, how how far have we come? And we'll talk about. what we can do later but how far have we come so i think that uh i don't want to focus on uh on on just being you know negative and saying oh no we haven't come far we've come a long way we've really come a long way and one of those ways is the fact if you i just take a small example of fiki right the uh, dni certification program that we did through this dni course with conscious development which encompassed everything be it gender equality lgbtq and as well as uh, people with disabilities the first ever certification like that um that in itself shows that we've come a long way with the kind of response that we got with so many people who turned up for it be it also with the fact that we launched a queer only foundation ksf with fiki right which was with its motto was embrace empower mainstream we got so many people to come together for that first time ever an industry body has a lesbian representation a gay representation a trans representation and this is not just for tokenism you are using our voices i'm here today talking to you as an openly gay man uh you know talking to you not just because it's pride month but i've had many conversations with you and my voice seems heard in pretty much i've done a conversation with the fiki uh, young leaders conferences as well and so many others similarly with zenab similarly with radhika 
that should show to us that we have now also progressed from just mere tokenism and we progressed from mere just having uh, you know the right tick marks launching the workplace equality index with fiki pride circle stonewall uk also shows to us that we've come a long way when it comes to lgbtq issues when you did the uh, the greater 50 uh, last year and that still continues uh, you know when you uh, when we have sort of worked together on building capacity for acid attack survivors or going in down down to people launching papers for empowering people with disabilities with microsoft you know so i think that we have come a long way we have a long way to go i totally agree there is a lot and we can definitely build steps but all of these points that i've just mentioned shows to me that no we are ready to listen we're ready to um uh, to be able to not just uh, have tick marks or quotas or you know have that okay we need to have these many women on our board or that many uh, you know queer people on our board or that many trans voices no we're here to make dni a part of the dna and i think that this has just shown to me that we've come really a long way and there is a lot for us to to expand on bollywood has also now started accepting uh, you know various gender stereotypes uh, and and has finally started portraying the trans community lgbtq community in a positive light we've now got athletes that are openly queer like duti chand you know we've reached a point where uh, women issues are no longer just relegated to uh, subculture they in the mainstream so i think that we've we've come a long way mr chirai uh, you know i i i'm i'm very uh, you know conscious of that and you know i think you've just talked about uh, the report that we launched uh, right uh, and the report was actually very interesting Uh, in terms of the positive nature of impact on internationally and domestically of companies that are inclusive would you like to share anything from that just uh, you know not necessarily the percentages but some some highlights of what it actually said because you referred to it and you know i just asked you yes yeah. so i mean basically in in a nutshell it sort of um, talked about the the pink economy the power of the pink economy as well that was one other that's the lee budget report which sort of became the basis of the community business report um i think in in a way people are conscious consumers are conscious they are fully aware of what the company's policies are um they are fully aware about what company is doing tokenism versus actual making a difference and i think that um having an inclusive company that is not just saying that we have um x number of employees or x number of team members um brings you your whole self to be able to come to that company and be open in that company and i think that um one of the biggest grouses earlier was about the fact that if you are not going to be having companies that are specific uh, that have specific alignment to being open or free be it lgbtq with employee resource groups safe spaces safe spaces were very very important if you didn't have those safe spaces in your company then you're not bringing a team member who is fully dedicated to you and to themselves and happy and therefore they're not giving you their 100% and um that was something that was highlighted in the report too and that is sort of a microcosm of just larger society if in society you're shunning an entire uh, group of people and basically telling them that they don't have rights and that they don't have equitable voices and that their voices are not important then they are not going to be able to even contribute to that society and of course the you know the power of the pink dollar is is immense you've got examples from various countries in the world uh, where basically company with especially lgbtq uh, you know uh, 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 employees and team members and as well as customers there is of course that conversation about higher disposable income and that you know because a lot of the queer people let's say don't want to have larger families so they spend a lot on themselves so there is all those economic benefits are there i don't disagree 
but the point is that that's not all that this is about right i think it's just it's about being basic empathetic people and that empathy should come to be a part of your company and i think that's where we really push through into our task force and i think that's what the business report also talked about of course it was very particular about numbers but what i took away from it was the larger picture yeah i, I think uh, you know that's very interesting because i i i actually took away two very important uh, you know lessons uh, from there because they seem to be you know given the fact that uh, you know coming out was not so easy right yeah. and there seem to be a fact about some conception among companies that if they came out that they were you know uh, lgbtqi friendly yeah. employed they may actually face a backlash from society yes. and second that they may actually face a backlash from other business communities yes. but the report very interestingly brought out that actually the bottom line and top line it's improves right? yes and, and 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 you know they they are more respected so i think yeah. that was the, those were the very two uh, important uh, you know yeah. just for me from that and i can you know i, I have actually pre i have to add to that whilst the report of course was international but if you look at it from the com- from my company perspective at the lalit in india and when we did all of this again it's a win i'm having this conversation with you i feel that i that i got the kind of respect and love at fiki and other places because of all the work that we were doing in particular with the lgbtq community so that report here is a live example mm-hmm. you know I, and i think you know i you were we are you're talking about that we would openly come out and if you recall the conversation we had that we would get uh, you know uh, the book that was written like paresh had wrote, written that book paresh right? paresh <laughs> paresh had written that book and i told him that we launch it uh, physically at a mm-hmm. annual session but we didn't have a physical annual session but i promised him that whenever you do we'll actually uh, do that but let's actually move to the lalit and the keshav suri foundation you know uh there are some fantastic fine examples and success stories in supporting the dni uh, you know uh, centric uh, community and you know how could you share some of the work that you are doing you know i i i keep referring to the fantastic work that you did uh, during the covid in in, in addressing Thank the you. needs of you know the, the food but that is very basic but you have gone beyond that so if you can just share some of the work that you are doing uh, well, thank you so much Mr. Shunai. So, of course, you know, DNI has been a part of us for a very long time. We have won also multiple tourism awards on uh, being the most sort of inclusive, uh, differently able friendly hotel for 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 many years. Um, but in the uh, since I've been working in the company, and that's been basically the last fourteen years, uh, I think we took the LGBTQ in particular cause at the Lalit uh, in a, in a much larger frame, and this was. Be, be, this was in between the time when uh, the reading down of section 377 happened in 2009 then it was you know brought back in 2013 and then of course uh, finally read down by the supreme court in 2018 but i but we went gung ho so be it with something as frivolous as a nightclub and i understand nightclubs right now though in any case you know pandemic they were shut but we sort of um try to change the whole narrative of what an inclusive space means you didn't need to have an x amount to enter a hotel or have a particular dressing style we wanted people to come with their own true self and be it with the artists that we booked or the kind of uh, people that we hired because i think that when you would say that you do inclusive policies and you say that you know you are wanting same sex couples to come to your hotels and you are wanting thing but if you don't see people like you doing the service people like you doing the uh, doing the back work and people like you on the stage you'll think it's just tokenism and so i think from my perspective it was very important that i had a team that was not just a accepting of of queerness but also being proud allies and also accomplices so i you know now everyone is like okay we don't need allies anymore we need accomplices we need people who are going to stand in marches with us but that's something that i had done at the lalit we had done as a group 
and again under the mentorship of Dr. Josna Suri, who's also the mentor of the DNI Task Force. Uh, you know, she said that if you're doing this, you need to do it right. You cannot be just doing this for okay, it's good for business. It is good for business, but is your team sensitized? Does your team know who they are going to serve? Do they have problems with that? Is your team sensitized on gender neutral toilets is, or gender neutral uh, uh, lockers? Does your team know that, um, that there are people who have you know, different abilities and therefore they have different needs? Does the team know that what could be maternity leave for, uh, for women could also be transitioning leave for a trans person? Does your, you know, and, and do you have the sensitive skills to understand that, that what, what goes through when a person is transitioning? And uh, I think these were the points that we really did at the Lalit that sort of pushed us irrespective of whether 377 existed or not. Um, we, and I think that's what made us a success was that it was not just we have to have this, 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 or that, you know, I'm saying that you must follow. It was conversation building that led to actually livelihood building, that led to actually going then outside of our little Lalit bubble. And that's what then created Keshav Suri Foundation. And that's what basically led to my relationship with you and Fiki. And now that's what we're trying to do through this task force is to basically go beyond that. Of course, COVID hit, everyone's plans have changed. Uh, hospitality industry, as you know, is completely in, in, in right now, uh, you know, probably the worst that it's ever been affected. But, you know, social distancing and hospitality is something that is an oxymoron. And, uh, but my team, because of what we have done, and I guess maybe the love that this pure love campaign, were like, no, let's, instead of serving guests, because we can't, let's serve the nation. And let's open up our kitchens. It's fine. Let's, it's okay. We will take precautions. We will wear PPE, we'll mask, but we want to go out there and serve people food because that's what is in our DNA. And that's what we want. And especially the communities that nobody's talking about, be it trans, be it acid attack survivors, be it differently able. And that then sort of led to various other, you know, conversations, including with the task force and Umaji and, you know, Akshay Patra through Fiki also reached out to so many states and cities where we were not having uh, hotels. And uh, yeah, I think that, you know, I'm being able to have this conversation here because of all the work that we managed to do at the Lalit and now through the foundation. You know, you're talking about allies and, 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 and you know, you've actually taken a new word which you actually talk of accomplice, right? But, yeah. uh, you know, just talking of this, so this was the book that actually... Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, and you know, uh, Dr. Joseph Suri, you referred to her. She's yeah. actually on page. Uh, and you are there. 26, yeah, <laughs> you know, and a lot of people actually ask me, uh, uh, you know, why are you in it? So I said, inclusion is not only uh, having people of the LGBT community, you know, come to, uh, let's say, the Kitty Sioux, but having ordinary people be able to come in there and actually, you know, mix freely. So inclusion yeah. is, you know, and I, I think that's that's a very important message about this ally and the accomplice thing that has actually yes. uh, come through. But, you know, I, I just want to round off with, uh, you know, what would be the role of policy advocacy in creating a supportive uh, ecosystem uh, for uh, the community? And, uh, you know, you could end with your message to industry to be an equal uh, opportunity employer. So I think that, uh, of course, in terms of for the LGBTQ community right now, in terms of policy, it's only the decriminalization that has happened. I think there's a lot more that needs to happen for the community to feel as if they are equal to the rest of society, be it insurance, same-sex insurance, be it, uh, you know, having bank joint bank accounts, be it, you know, the simple pleasures that maybe a heterosexual uh, couple enjoys uh, or those, you know, things that maybe heterosexual people take for granted but privileged or not privileged there is still you know a lot of uh, uh, equating to to go to on the other side there are a lot of policy uh, uh, you know decisions that have happened for trans people which which is 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 great 
but that hasn't sort of equated into uh, is societal and industry uh, you know equality you don't see that many trans people in so many jobs so you know it's a it's a catch 22 whilst the, it's great to have policy decisions and we need to have hopefully marriage equality one day as well and so that we can feel you know as equal on the other side you've got trans uh, policies that are existing on paper but that hasn't somehow translated to society yet so you know i think that we need to work on both and they have to work basically equally as far as industry and industry bodies are concerned taking a cue from just trans equality uh is that i think there is such a big opportunity for us to be able to get a uh, you know a set of such highly uh imaginative and and beautiful people to be able to be our fiercest allies in the industry uh to be able to give them whole selves at work and to be able to give employment to a community that has been usually just disregarded but more so now i think that industry also needs to take steps further to create that equitable society meaning let's take some of the funds and actually educate certain people who do not have the access to that kind of education so something small that keshav suri foundation did uh, you know my my cousin aditya nanda passed away and i ever since he passed away and it was because of mental health issues he, i um, changed the name of their scholarship at the lalit suri hospitality school to aditya nanda scholarship uh, and that scholarship is basically uh, for the lgbtq community in particular the trans community to become future chefs uh to become uh you know to be able to work in the bakery and the pastry department a very predominantly male dominated world uh heteronormative world you know chefs you always think of 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 men so i created this particular scholarship so that they have the required skill set and i think that's a very small example so many other companies starbucks is doing it in united states um there are a whole bunch of other companies who are actually going out there going to places like what they call ghettos or projects or whatever and actually giving them that opportunity to be able to get educated to have those skills to be able to be in a very high educated um you know uh, kind of ivy league school and then further get a really fantastic job and i think that that's what the indian industry needs to do especially when it comes to the dni field and the task force effort thank you thank you so much for you know sharing you know you know your whole not only your experience but your journey in in, in this thing of getting you know uh, recognition and equality for for the not only the lgbtq i committee but you know uh, sector but also for you know different segments specific segments uh, within that uh, thank you for actually leading from the front uh, through the keshav suri uh, foundation your last point about the nanda fellowship was great i think that's what uh, we need to do and you know i hope that uh, members listening in will take the points about uh, the benefits of uh, being inclusive and also the advocacy and the requirements that they need to do and that as we go forward and when we if we when we meet next year in the same time during the pride month uh, we would have had a lot of uh, you know positivity in the system and companies will find the benefits of actually a more inclusive uh, you know hiring policy purchasing policy uh, supportive policy so thank you very much for your time uh, today thank you so much mr chinoy thank you